Hello, Gorgies are on view this time for our sale on the 30th of January. Blimey, month nearly gone past by the time we get to that sale. Uh, as I said last time, the sausage factory has been slimming down because people don't move house uh, and various other things over Christmas. And so we usually have a two to three week run up to the sales and therefore um, there's not quite so much in the sale as usual. In particular, the furniture section is slimmer with only about 50 or so lots. In fact, none in the warehouse, but what there is here is quite interesting. It's quite a nice selection, particularly for the garden. The bulbs are coming up. It's time to start thinking, get in ahead of everybody else. Don't leave it till May when the prices might go up, but do they? They seem to be pretty strong at the moment. Anyway, if you fancy a copper copper, how about lot 41? Particularly large example. Uh, has been painted green, a uh, fairly thin coat of paint that almost looks like verdigris, and that will probably wear and flake off over the years. There's a host of other little urns and pots and pedestals. Standing up, perhaps lot 43. Nice bit of weathering to the pedestal. Yeah, it's nice. It's got some moss on it that needs watering. Um, and that's in at three to 500. We've got some stone benches, further pots, drifting past quite a smart little desk there, benches, figures, all sorts. So little, little things to consider for the garden, including some further copper coppers, shown down here. They're lots. nicer. Lots nicer. Why are they nicer? Because they're not painted. They're not painted. And there we got go. That lovely finish. Yeah, you've got that nice. This one's particularly oh. nicely riveted. Yeah. Um, so three and five, also eighty-one twenty estimates. Like what are they going to make? What do we think of our estimates? Rubbish. So yes. um, they'll probably make near one fifty two hundred each. But they're, as we say, here to be sold, and they're going to find their own level, which is always the best way. We don't want things unsold or overpriced or what have you. So looking at the furniture, we've got a few bookcases and bureaus and chests of drawers and the like. There's some easy chairs um, down the end here. Caught my eye, quite decorative. I'll spin it around so we get an idea of the size of it. This is lot fifteen, a telescope, leather bound. Uh, it's signed up here in the usual place. Uh, it says, um, Tell a Garrison Mark I, Telescope Garrison Mark I, I would presume by Broadhurst Clarkson & Co Limited, and it's 1940 and it has a military arrow suggesting this was military issue. Gosh. So there we go, that's quite fun. Looks to be its original tripod. A lot of the ones you see these days, um, tripods are repro. Um, because the, the, particularly with the binoculars and things, they came off other things like ships and tanks and things, so they didn't have tripods and so they get married to reproductions. But this is a, a period one, which is rather nice. Estimate, what was the estimate? I'm trying to remember now. I think the estimate was two to 300 pounds. Doesn't seem excessive. It's not the most, ex this leather's a bit bashed and what have you, but still quite a nice thing. Stick in your conservatory or what have you. So let's go and have a look at the smalls. So here in the smalls, bit of a variety, lots more, more smalls in this sale. There's still a juicy, juicy quantity. 564 catches my eye. This is by an artist called Jose Weiss, or Weiss, who actually painted in Sussex. That could be along the River Ouse. Don't know for sure. It doesn't say there's nothing on the back. Lot 564. I think the estimates around about 300. Monarch Glass, Scottish Glass Factory. Uh, from memory, and if I'm correct, <laughs> this was made, um, they came up with this system, they also made linoleum, and they put plastics into the glass mix, which gave it this, this rather splendid effect. Um, maybe that's a load of old fooey, but I'm sure that's what I've read somewhere. Anyway, that's lot 403, and what's unusual about it is its size. It's a particularly big, large example. Estimates 1 to 150. Doesn't have a label. They, they don't all, and there was another factory doing similar. Um, but um, still, that's one to keep your eye on. Quite a nice piece of glass there. Various decorative prints, uh, uh, mostly at modest price ranges. Oh, glasses, you're pointing at glasses, and yes, lot 415. We've got a set of, uh, well, a near set of 19th century glass rummers. They? they are quite fun. They're not a bad size. Gosh, they're heavy. Good solid weight. They take a bit of, you know, they're tough. They're probably from a pub originally or something, and uh, you can get a fair bit of wine in them. And they have that sort of very character. Important. Very important. <laughs> well, it doesn't last long, does it? No. Um, what's fun about them is the subtle differences in the knobs and the bowl size and even the colour of the metal, the oh, colour yeah. of the glass. Mm. So there's 12 of these. If you're sitting down to dinner party with or people around the kitchen table and you're pouring them all wine, it's rather nice that they're, they're quirkily different. Um, estimates 150 to 200 pounds. If you want to be even more quirkily different, go for lot 418, 
which uh, has an array of different kinds of rummers. Again, we can see the different qualities in the metal of the glass. Some have a quite a dull lead finish, yeah. traditionally associated actually that lead colour with sort of better quality Irish glass. Others have a more yellowy tone, or even this one's got a bit sort of greenish. And, and it's so fat walled that actually about half of what you see is what you're going to get in there, almost like a publican's glass made to disguise the quantity. This one here has an inscription to do with the capture of Gibraltar, 1704. It's not from the period because look at that shape. That shape with that square foot is, is late 18th century, not early. Um, but maybe it's for the centenary. 1804 would work for that glass so perhaps it's um perhaps it was just done later anyway and dressed up there's one with some nice engraving bit of fun slight sort of lilac tint to the glass there lovely broad foot uh the pontil mark at the base so, so a nice mixed lot of glasses for your money there lot 418 next to it now something completely different as they say <laughs> yeah. japanese this is um I suppose Satsuma, it's earthenware pottery, it's late Meiji period, so it's probably late 19th century, could be early 20th. It's modelled as a sack, mm. and it's modelled as Daikoku's sack. I closer because the colours are fabulous. I was they? artfully rotating it right. as you got closer. Yeah. Particularly as we're going wallpaper shopping later, I thought we'd better <laughs> have a look at that. And then on the top is, is that the knob for the lid is a, a mallet or hammer, which again, Daikoku... Um, carries around. So lot 419, you get with it two little Katani pieces mm. and the estimate's sort of 8120. It's probably about right. As far as I can see, condition is good. Something fancy. Bonbon. Bon. Completely different. Bonbon, bon, you say 422. We say possibly Moser, the Austrian factory that was renowned for high quality gilt and enameled glasswares and that is high quality gilt and enameled glassware with these it's lovely so little pont or prancy little little jewels these are called these little spots of so all enamel hand all hand done mm. yeah um pair of those 422 what are they for i don't know looking sitting on the table looking fancy it did, um yeah bonbons bonbons fruit Apparently. probably not fruit Whoever but uh, 100 to 120 pound broad estimate to uh, cover all eventualities possibly uh, i drift past the pile of silver plate and it's a good opportunity to pass comment on lot 393 back in the old days so 15 years ago or more if we'd had this lot of plate, we probably would have broken it up into about five lots. There would have been a tea set and there would have been the entree dishes and then there would have been the claret jug. Because plate used to make good money and the, particularly the Italians, but also the Americans would come and buy it. Um, and you could see £100 for those and you could see £100, £100 plus for an ordinary tea set like that. And better ones could make a few hundred. Mm -hmm. And these days, I'm afraid we have to put the whole lot into one pile. And maybe that whole lot will make getting on for £100 and maybe it won't. It's... Um, because it, it's simply not fashionable. Because it's just simply not fashionable. No. And a lot of these things were wedding presents yes. back in the day. Yeah. So you get your set of teaspoons and tongs and they are, are they silver, those ones? No, they've got false marks on. So they're just silver plate. Now you can buy a set of silver ones for 40 quid. So what's that make a set of plated ones worth? You know, five or much. ten or not much, as mm. you say. And the other thing is, of course, a lot of these are, oh, are almost cheap. unused. Well, you say that. They're a late pair of plated fish servers. Yes. They've been quite well loved and used because you can see the brass showing through, ah, the okay. base metal showing through the engraving, which isn't great. The handles are plastic. They're ivory, meant to look like ivory. Um, so they're not the best of examples. Mm. Uh, in there, that was a little nut set. Um, silver applied over the, the pick and the crackers with it. Mm. But again, they're we, not used anymore. We don't really use either. them. You're right. No. We don't use them and therefore they don't attract much value no. uh, unless they're whopping great big things. Yes. Uh, down here, down here, uh, this caught oh, yeah, the eye yeah. like Chinese this, table screen in hardwood. Bit of fun because it rotates there. When you say table screen, sits you... on a table. Oh, right. Screens okay, you but... from. I mean, it's just purely decorative. It's not. Does that? <laughs> yeah, you can see why it's popular. Easy tiger. Um, woof, 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 woof. Row, row. Uh, <laughs> It's not three six one, three to five hundred pound estimate, I do believe, uh, which is enough money to be honest. But mm. um, it is Chinese and it is in nice condition, so we'll see how that gets on. Reversing backwards, 
I think. Am I going this way? Got some Pinot. We've got some dessert wines. There's always a bit of booze lurking about here. And these are um, Chateau Coutet and, uh, from Barzac in mixed condition, but the levels look good. Look at the colour variety. is rather fun, isn't it? Um, 1983 for all of them. Lot 343. Wow. Something for the bon viveur, perhaps. Um, look at those, they're fun, aren't they? Drink champagne of that. This <laughs> tinted colour, lot 338. I was going to talk about this. Oh, yes, yeah, she's pretty. Smart. 578 is a Christoleum. What is a Christoleum, I hear you say? Oh, maybe you don't. Maybe say shut up and get is on with it. Is it someone who shows their bottom? It's not. A Christoleum no. is a print printed onto a sheet of glass, effectively, ah. from behind. So the glass is always slightly curved. It's never pure flat. The, the earlier reverse prints on glass were on flat glass. For whatever reason, these always have this slightly bowed um, form. And whatever you want to print subject-wise could be printed on. Sometimes you get it, it, the text at the bottom saying, well, this one has an artist's name, but sometimes you actually get the company that have produced it. Mm. Uh, always in traditional period frames of reasonable quality. They were probably quite expensive sort of fairly luxury items in their day, which is 1890, 1910. Um, today, not so popular. That's probably 30, 40 pounds. I think um, she's lovely. And it's helped by the fact that she's, she's a nudie rather than something less commercial. Um, other sort of decorative works, 576. That's sort of David Muirhead. Nice oil, that. The Harbour Lights, rather nice. I like these little mm. touches of colour up here. The condition looks fair. Further smalls down the line, including a group of assorted studio and art pottery wares and ceramics. Down the end here, I liked the look of this, 267. It's really nice. It's been catalogued as contemporary because it's, it's bronzed resin. In other words, it's bronze powder dumped into plastic, so it's, a, it's effectively plastic. Um, it has some sort of... I saw a monogram on it somewhere. There we go. It's got... AF and copyright on its bum. Um, it looks like one of those really good Art Deco bronzes Very that would sweet. be worth squillions. 267, modest estimate, 40 to 60. Down below it, 271, if you fancy a big dish. This is great. Look at that. Yeah. 271, it's nice Spanish. Colour. We say Spanish studio pottery. Nice luster. Yeah, it's got a, a squiggle monogram on the back. Mm. 271, estimate 180 to 220. So the value, I quite liked it. There's some Murano, he comes around again, sorry. There's some Murano glass in the sale and various studio glass. This one, 277, is by Ruth Salk or Salky. Um, artfully made, got the sort of Murano like look. Cost. The, yeah, with the gold, it does a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Does it have a bum on the back? Yes, it does, and shoulders. Well, look. there we are, yes, there you are. It's there almost like a torso form then, isn't it? Yes. That's 277 in 100 to 150. The uh, cherries, cherries? does anything? Well, there are two of these in the sale. They're by an artist called Julie Harris. The other one is right near the beginning of the picture section is of lemons. This one, as you see, is cherry. It's got 616. Nice quality frame. The other one has a label on the back for an expensive gallery. They are, if, to, I don't want to be rude to Julie, but essentially they're, they're decorative wall filler of, of, of some quality. Mm. I think the estimate's 200, might be a bit pushy. I've seen right. others making less. Okay. Something that's by a sort of more sought after oh, artist. I like this. 612. Yeah. This is Bernard Dunstan. Good track record. Uh, colours, oil on board. Uh, yeah, nicely painted. Venetian scene. It's uh, the Campo Rainy Day, dated 74. Uh, got the artist's initials, which is the normal way he signs. Estimate three to five hundred. Right. It'll touch of quality there. So get what you on. pay for. Sorry? Get what you pay for. You do get what you pay for mostly. I mean, it's, it's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? As well. So some people say, "Good grief! Why did someone pay X for, that's, that's for X?" But um, generally speaking, yes, you do get what. It's still the case with antiques and fine art. You get what you pay for. But with the exception that fashion kicks in. So a Victorian oil on canvas by almost all artists is, is better value in terms of quality mm. compared to a contemporary one. But, um, you know, things will change and times change and that, that, that has the other bearing that, that what is fashionable is, is what influences price as well as quality. Anyway, we had a rummage behind the silver counter because it looks like Roger's been busy banging out the silver. 
and we picked out a few it's lots a nice for you to pink. consider. Have a look through the whole section because it's quite interesting. But mm. we start with 801. The icicle. You say the icicle because it's rather nice. Though, it's isn't so it? It's a whopper, pretty. isn't it? Mm. This is um, Victorian silver and cut glass, hobnail cut for the fact that it's cut with these sort of hobnails. First thing I did when I picked it up was looked for damage. So immediately look at the base. The base looks okay. Um, probably a few tiny ticks, chips and nicks up here around the collar because that's the sort of place you get them. It's fully hallmarked for Thornhill & Co, good maker. Uh, dated for 1883, estimate 100 to 150. So that was full of perfume? Yes, that's a scent bottle. Yeah, that's <laughs> perfume. Yeah, and it, then it's got a sprung lid. And mm, did it have a stopper? No, this is sprung as well. Gosh. So the inside of the lid is sprung so that it forms a perfectly tight fit against the glass How edge decadent. and therefore it won't leak. Sometimes you get a glass stopper in there, but not on this occasion because it's not necessary because of that clever invention. So there's a bit of quality for you. It is. 811, Heffalumps. There we go. This is Patrick Mavros, who's something of a name in making these silver animals. And it's stamped 925 for the silver standard and various other stamps and this marks is, underneath. Have I got Russia? it? It says, it looks to me like it says Hasha. Oh, Hasha. Is Hasha. Can you oh, see that? Is okay. that coming out? Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, it's a lovely solid little thing. Really nice, pleasingly heavy. Whoops. It's lot 811. Estimates two to three hundred pounds. So if you like your elephants, there's, there's an elephant for you. Uh, here's a rather smart modern silver tray. It's been catalogued as possibly a coaster, but I mean, that's some decanter, isn't it? Could be a ship's decanter, maybe, but probably just a tray. But nicely done, mahogany. I think, I think Roger said something about a nice big bottle of champagne, actually. I'm with him. Well, I, I like his thinking. Mm. Jeroboam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fully hallmarked around the edges there. Um, lot 136, estimate 150 to 200. Maker is John Bull from 1996. So fairly modern piece of, relatively modern piece of silver. Mm. 844, also more modern, Elizabeth II manufacture. They look like they're some sort of arts and crafts thing that could be Omar Ramsden or somebody like that, but actually they are Oliver Imagine. Bailey from 1973. Mm. Um, and some of these modern silver makers are, are sort of coming to their fore. We say I modern, I mean, that's nearly 50 years ago. Yeah, the planished finish, this gently hammered finish, planished yeah, is, is always pleasing, I think, mm. anyway. Um, they're just little cups, uh, estimate 100 to 150, because I guess, again, they're not overly that's useful. that's a really lovely gift. To give someone something that's not useful, but very pleasing and pleasing. Well, what would you it, use it for? I don't know. It looks to me like I should have red wine in it. Well, I'd be pleased to receive them. I think it can make your wine taste a bit funny. Well, you'd have to drink it quickly. <laughs> Yeah, we know you do that. <laughs> right, 854, moving on rapidly, as they say. 854. Can you stand him up, please? He's rather Thank good, you. isn't he? He's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is that 6 point or 12 point? 6. 6. There's a 6 point stag. There he is, lot 854. He is stamped 800, so he's, he's continental, sort of German, all that part of the world. And, of course, plenty of makers of that sort of thing in that part of the world. Nicely done, lot 250 to 300, uh, estimate 250 to 300. He's quite a good, chap, he's a good he? size, isn't he? Yeah. Reasonably good size, yes. anyway. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, in the silver, 857. Mm. Here's something, chi you, you made that noise. Yeah. Mm, you don't like it. Hmm. Um, something you bring home and I go, oh, what are we going to do? Would you know, usually you'd look at this and think it was a tea caddy um, because of the shape and form. Sugar but sugar. the lid has been drilled so one could dust sugar out of it. It's got a dragon running around. It's by the Chinese Hong Kong maker Wang Hing, estimate 100 to 150. Nice dragon going around it. Clean up nicely that. Uh, so there's a good selection of silver. There's more silver in the cabinet. So have a look through. Other things that stand out behind the counter, there's a collection of modern collector's coins, but I thought I'd touch on, there must be about 15 lots of stamps in the cell, nicely presented, such as lot 451. Um, not something that um, is really something that I'm particularly uh, knowledgeable about, I have to say. I mean, generally speaking, this is my overview, don't hold me to it, is that stamps need to be from the Victorian era through to round about the First World War. But there are exceptions, of course, as with every field of collecting. And as new collectors come in, they'll probably start collecting the more modern stamps. These have just been described as fiscal stamps. Fiscal. And 
I think it's interesting because it says Inland Revenue is stamped down the side, hence the fiscal, and they're signed across. So it's sort of suggesting they were used for contracts or something to do with tax. Uh, look, foreign bill, mm. five shillings. So they're quite interesting. That's not 451. Uh, another round of lot I picked out just because I like the look of it from a distance was 453. American stamps. Look, we've got George, is that George Washington showing on the front? I think it is. Um, this is May 1914, so it's not of the period of him, but he is featured on the front. And there's a, a, a sort of interesting um, condition. This, look at these, condition looks great. Um, so you're getting a few pages there of assorted American stamps, about six pages of, of different ones, all in these modern mounts, 453. And last of all, of course, um, 447 features some Penny Blacks, you know, and so Penny Blacks are famously sort of considered to be the rarest stamp, but in, in, of course they're not really. Um, and they vary in desirability, and it's whether they've been cropped and cut too hard, as you can see some of these have. There are, to my knowledge, dozens or more of different versions of them that evolved over the years, different strikings, engravings. Um, what the postmark is, where it is, whether it's on it is relevant, and if it's attached to a, a letter. Um, sometimes these um, postal stamps upon them can be more interesting than the stamp itself. So this one says more to pay. So they stuck a penny stamp on it and at the other end, <laughs> someone's got a cough up. That's that is quite funny, isn't yeah. it, really? Um, who was it sent to? George Whiteman of Eastbourne had more to cough to up extra, more to pay. Yeah. Um, that one stamped Helsham. So we've got some local interest here. And then over the page, there's some more. They're not, they're not uh, Penny Blacks. These are little, um, they've been cut in half, presumably, because you only need half the value. Look at the, you, the you, writing, the, the address. Yeah, it's so nice, on. isn't it? That's so Mr. Nice. Mee's, Albany Villas, Manor Park. Nice, from 1895 there. Gosh. And yeah, it looks like they're cutting the stamp in half to presumably do half the value or something. I must admit, I don't quite know why, but it's interesting, isn't it? And I think it's that sort of thing that gets you looking about something and then you think, oh, that's interesting. And before you know it, you've got a collection and your wife's complaining about it. And yes, that's the way life goes. Lot two, uh, estimate 250 to 300, so 447. Um, let's put that back somewhere. Appropriate. There we go. So it's all here again, as ever, a slightly smaller sale, but we're, we're working hard to uh, find some more goods for you. Um, there's a little bit of uh, jewellery to look at as well in the sale. So look at that. There's a nice Jensen necklace in there, isn't there? Yes, there yes. is. And earrings. And earrings, amongst other things. Yes. So there we go. As ever, all sorts of goodies. Come along and see us. We're open here. We'd love to see you. And uh, thanks for watching.